Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this terrific Thursday here in Connecticut. Rainy, overcast, kind of raw. Good day to stay inside and practice all day. Uh, I don't have that luxury. I'm going to practice a lot, but uh, I do have to teach. I do have to get the post office for mouthpieces and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not complaining. Anyway, with that said, the legendary Lou Soloff. Uh... We'll talk about his chops. That's what we're here for. Uh, I have a little up close and personal little um, stories about his chops. I have worked, I did work with him twice, way back in the day. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Anyway, I have played a little bit today, so I should be ready, rare to go. And uh, let's see what we got. today. I did practice so there's a lot of blood flowing. Anyway. Yeah, a little um, double C's and Corelli Sonata number eight. One of my uh, students is working on that, so it was up on the, pan the stand. I thought I'd dazzle you with a little Corelli. Anyway, uh, Lou Soloff, man, I'll tell you what. This is back, now his career started, I, I, I don't know, uh, early 60s. I got to uh, New York in 1970, okay? So he was, he was the man. Now, I'm going to go back and set this up a little bit. That was absolutely 100%, I talked about that, the, the golden age in brass. I mean, it was just a glorious time to be in New York City and around these just extraordinary every time you turn around there was another great trumpet player it was wonderful and for a guy like myself just a trumpet junkie man I was soaking this up like you wouldn't believe um, uh, Vacchiano just retired uh, Phil Smith was not there yet uh, Gerard Schwartz in his very short-lived reign um, was in the Philharmonic Mel Broyles was killing it in the, in the um, Met uh, but the thing about it is, there was money everywhere. There was money everywhere in the music business at the time. All the, the, the New York Philharmonic, the New York City Ballet, the Met, the New York City Opera, uh, Alvin Ailey, every, it was just a wash in all this uh, National Endowment of the Arts money, which is all gone for the most part now. But they were just, it was just a glorious time. To, they had full seasons doing Big shows with lots of uh, subs to come in and augmenting the op uh, orchestra is just wonderful. Broadway was killing it. Miracle Man Bob Milliken was just killing. Uh, 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 -da 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 Chorus line. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, full full uh, orchestras. I mean, and the the studios were just cooking cooking. Um, the old guard, 
Bernie Glow, Mel Davis, John Frost, Dick Perry, Bob McCoy were dovetailing with the new group, the new uh, group of guys, Marvin Stam, um, Faddis, uh, Alan Rubin, Lou Soloff. Ah, he was one of the inner circle and just one of the kings. I mean, we idolized these guys. Herseth was one. Gerard Schwartz we didn't care for, okay? But these guys were just everywhere. They were on Saturday Night Live. They were making movies with, with the, you know, the Belushi and the Blues Brothers and everything. They were just the coolest guys, and they were everywhere. They were everywhere. Not only were they making money hand over fist, they were at every rehearsal band and every clinic and every um, – brass conference that was in New York. They were everywhere. They were very nice guys. They were very approachable. And Lou Soloff was one. He was he was just great. Now, basically a jazz player. He went to the Eastman School of Music and later Juilliard. But uh, very, very tight with uh, Gil Evans and his whole family. Rose to fame, national fame, acclaim, with, of course, blood, sweat, and tears. And his solo on Spinning Wheel is just legendary. I got a... Um, clip down below to check it out. You young guys, if you never heard it before, uh, you older guys might be a trip down memory lane. Um, and that's another thing. The pop between Blood, Sweat, and Tears in Chicago and all that, all the rock groups, all the rock groups had, had brass sections. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Um, anyway, and Lou Soloff was the man. I mean, Blood, Sweat, and Tears to jazz to... to, to Played with uh, Tito Puente, Maynard. He played with Maynard, um, and every single jingle that was in New York, he was on. Uh, at that time, the jingles were very loose, but the jingles were in New York, and all the film scores were in um, L.A. And that's another thing. The star that he was, he fattest all them. They're constantly, oh, they're not around. Uh, he he took a, he's out to L.A. doing a film score. I, I mean, it was just. And Doc would come over and do jingles. It, it was just wonderful. Wonderful. And that was also before um, the union caved. And the residuals were just amazing. So these guys were making so much. I mean, they were kings. They were absolutely kings. Anyway, <laughs> his chops. <laughs> his chops. Now, I did two dates with him. Okay, and he was absolutely legendary for this, for what I'm about to say. I did two days with him for uh, North 40 Productions and Jim Todd. It was myself. It was one on uh, the early in the week and a, sort of a, a, another part to it um, was later on in the week. Okay, so the same week. And um, it was myself, Mel Davis, John Frost, and Lou Soloff. Um, Mel played first, Lou played second, John third, and myself fourth. Okay. Um, now, he didn't know me from Adam. I introduced, you know, he, he was you know, just the coolest thing going. And he comes in, he's got a mouthpiece in his trumpet. He puts two more mouthpieces, different mouthpieces on the stand. And he's got a denim jacket with uh, pockets all of a chuck full of mouthpieces. He would jingle, jangle, jingle when he walked walk across the room. And throughout the date, in the middle, without taking a rest, I mean, in the middle of a take, start with one mouthpiece, but a little, 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 put another one in, but a little, 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 put another one in, but a little, 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 take one out of his pocket, put one. I mean, this is what's going on all the time. That's what he was doing. Now, he was also uh, very interested in what Jerry was doing. He took several lessons with him, nothing, um, nothing very, uh, week one or two a week no it was like one every six months eight months and then he'd be off all you know so it really wasn't uh, consistent but he was very very interested in what jerry was doing jerry had the midtown, midtown office at that time and he also came out to staten island he was very needless to say he was very interested in jerry's mouthpieces and he actually asked me he said what mouthpiece are you using i told him jerry's abc whatever it was he said oh yeah i got one of those tell jerry i say hi that's all we said to each other and um but that's what he was about. Now, if you look at his chops, his chops look terrific. Very, very thick top lip. Very, very little stretch, but they are tight. They are tight. And if you listen to his playing, as much as the chops look good, I don't think, and Jerry, uh, well, the thing about it is, I, I don't think his tongue was in the right place. Okay? Now, 
back then, Jerry wasn't into the tunnel. So that was just uh, a, a non-issue for us. And also, he did not have the 1SB yet. So, you know, but if you look at his chops, uh, they are fantastic. And that is what gave him the incredible um, dexterity and whatnot with his jazz solos and everything that he had. Um, but with that said, if you listen to it, the notes really don't pop uh, crisp as some of the other guys, you know, Harry and everything. Again, we're comparing him to the greatest players that ever lived, but they don't quite pop like that. Okay? Um, and I think that was the reason for the jumping around from different mouthpieces. Um, if the chops weren't in, tongue wasn't in the right place, you couldn't really go from uh, uh, octave to octave and jumping around in different styles and everything because you weren't controlling it with the tongue. Okay? And Jerry said, uh, you know, ex just extraordinarily talented. I mean, just a redonkulously talented guy. But he agreed uh, that the chops were not completely right. And um, again, we didn't have the tongue back then, so it was a moot point. But what, what, oh man, again, just looking back to the roaring, roaring 70s, and I sound like a, like an, an old man, you know, sitting in his rocker, but this guy was it. I mean, the inner circle and just could play anything. And from Eastman to Juilliard, he could play classical stuff too. He did have some of that training. He didn't like it and you didn't hear him doing it a lot. But in the studio, if something came up of, of classical ilk, no problem. No problem. He would have a mouthpiece for that too. <laughs> and quite frankly, I did not, again, I was on fourth and he was on second. So I wasn't really privy to what mouthpieces they were. <coughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He was obviously not completely comf comfortable with any of them. So he was just a little too before the 1SB. Now, I am going to say something that much of you guys don't want to hear. But guys, he died at early 70s. I believe he was 71. Guys, that is a talent that has gone way too soon. He was not healthy. I don't know how he died, and I don't know what the cause was, but it's just way too soon. Guys, he did not take care of himself. Um, and he should still be with us. He's not that much older than me. He's not that much older than me at all. Uh, he should still be killing double C's and playing his jazz down in the clubs down in New York. And he should he should still be with us. And guys, if you're concerned at all about your health, True Power Weight Loss Center. It's just in its infancy. I do have a True Power Health and Fitness book, Weight Loss Center book of the month in coming up. It will be out in the next couple of weeks. I will let you know about that. But guys, even if the great health doesn't give you note for note, give you a, a, a leg up. I think it does. But even if it doesn't, if you don't buy into that, just don't cut yourself short. Don't cut yourself short. Lou, for extraordinary talent, you should still be with us. Anyway, that's it. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all.